you may know that very, very few people actually set goals or create a vision for what they want. What you may not know is those few people who do, the bulk of them actually program themselves to fail. Is there a difference between not wanting to be poor and wanting to be rich or have a certain amount of money? Uh, is there a difference between uh, not wanting to be overweight or wanting to lose weight and wanting to be a healthy weight? Is there a difference between not wanting to be alone and wanting to be a, in a healthy relationship? The difference is actually huge because in each of those pairs, one programs you for failure, the other programs you for success. And today I'm going to show you exactly how to make this work for you so you program yourself for success. Just for a minute, focus all of your attention on one very simple task, okay? And with all of your mind, do not think of blue chocolate. No matter what you do, don't let blue chocolate enter your mind. Don't picture it, don't think of it. Do not think of blue chocolate. What happens? You think of blue chocolate. You see, the thing is your brain can't make a picture of a negative and your brain works in pictures. Words are just a surface level. If you ask someone, you know, how do you know the way to work? What's the best way to work? What happens? You go and you walk through in your mind's eye, you visualize it and then you tell someone, okay? So the thing is when I say don't think of something, you automatically think of what I, s I say not to think of. And this shows that there's two types of goals that you can have. You can have what are called towards goals, which is what you want to move towards, what you want. And you can have away from goals, which you want to move away from, which is what you don't want. And what our society is focused on, everything in our society almost is focused on away from goals. How do we bring up our kids? We say, now don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. Very rarely do we say, do this or this is the right way. We, say, we t tell people what not to do. All the industrial warning signs are do not do this, okay? So it takes a lot of work to actually focus on what you want. Because let's say you set a goal of I don't want to be stressed. Guess what picture you create in your unconscious mind? In your unconscious mind mind runs you. You create a picture of stress and guess what you manifest over and over even though you want something different. Okay, So what difference does a few words make? Let me show you. Let's deal with some very simple examples. If I'm to graph over time, let's say money. All right. So someone who does not want to be poor, when they are poor, when they don't have money, that's incredibly, incredibly motivating. And they work their butts off and they get money and then as they get money, they lose the motivation because they're not poor anymore. But what picture do they have? Poor. So what happens? They sabotage themselves and they lose it all. And it's not a conscious thing, it's just totally unconscious because it, the picture up there is not poor, which is poor, okay? And guess what? Now you're motivated as heck, so you work and work and work and work and you get some money and then the motivation ends and boom, you sabotage yourself, you lose it because the picture is poor. And this cycle just goes over and over and over again and that's the life cycle of someone who does not want to be poor. This is also a way of talking about relationships. Let's say instead of measuring money, you're measuring intimacy or connection in a relationship. Someone who does not want to be alone, when they are alone, they're highly motivated to find someone to connect with. And then they get someone, but the picture they've still got is alone. So guess what they do? They sabotage and boom, they're alone again. Then they're motivated to find another. And so this series of relationships that keep falling apart is the pattern of someone who does not want to be alone. In contrast, let's go back to the money one. If, let's say you want to set a towards goal to have a certain amount of money. You may start slower, but that's the goal, the vision, the picture that you've got. Once you hit that, maybe you set another goal and you start moving towards that at whatever is the pace. Same thing with a relationship. If you've got a picture of a healthy relationship, 
you, you move towards it and then you may take it to a higher level and so on. And you can have much healthier and longer lasting relationships as you go. Now, the other type of thing that pops up a lot is the issue of weight. Okay, so if you measure again with time and now weight, the graph here is just reversed. What, I mean, what do people focus on? The society is so focused on losing weight. Guess what picture is up there? The weight, the overweight, the excess weight. Okay, so that's what keeps happening. So you've got the excess weight, you're motivated as heck, you lose, you lose, and then as you lose some, the motivation goes off. The picture is still the weight. Guess what? You go off your diet, and then it just, boom, the same cycle keeps happening again and again with one diet after another and so on and so forth. So the, you know, that's sort of the life cycle of someone who d does not want to be overweight. Compared to if you say this is my ideal weight, then you can start to move and you can, may again move more slowly, but as you get to that ideal weight, that's the picture that's there, so you're much more likely to maintain it. So if you want to increase your success with your goal setting, with your visioning, take a look through and see are your goals away from the things you don't want or are they things you want to move towards, the things that you want. What you want are towards goals and you will radically increase your success if you make that one simple change in your goals and your visions.